Hi, this is Sam from Teacher Dauntist. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. And today we have a very special person with us, Ahmed. Hey everybody, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> on my YouTube channel and so many videos that I've posted on how can you become a dentist in Canada? What are the alternate options if you are an international dentist and want to immigrate to Canada? And also if you are looking to get into a DDS program at any of the universities in Canada. There were so many comments that I received with questions that were still not answered and I called a person who can answer most of these questions. My research took me to Scholars Dental who is offering an online course and I thought who better than their instructor Mr. Hafiz can answer some of our questions. How was your journey when you moved to Canada and how much did you struggle and how do you relate to those new dentists who are coming to Canada and trying to go through the NDB process? But, um, Scholars Dental, like how did you start that? What was your purpose behind starting the Scholars Dental and what is the focus or your main mission behind Scholars? So all these questions will be answered and some laughs will be shared between me and Dr. Hafiz. Uh, I'm really excited to bring him on my channel so that the questions that have been asked on my channel can be answered by a person sitting right there in the industry. Welcome back, please subscribe to my channel and check out some other popular videos that I made on how to become a dentist in Canada, how to immigrate to Canada as an international dentist and what could be your alternate career options if you are a dentist from some other country and want or have already immigrated to Canada. What questions you have that I can answer in the comments below. Let's get right into it. Uh, tell me first of all, where are you located? And uh, I'm in Halifax right now. Where are you in Canada? I'm in Toronto, like in uh, Ontario. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Our our school is based in Mississauga, but you know, online doesn't really see any <laughs> any locations really. So with the COVID, <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. yeah. yeah, got some That's recent great. restrictions too. Yesterday, like some new stuff, and yeah. getting even more like the restrictions. It's very yeah. interesting. We don't know what's gonna happen, you know. So hopefully things get better. With COVID-19 spreading in North America and actually all over the world, online learning is the only option left for so many international dentists who are trying to get their license to practice in Canada. So I looked up all the online classes for AFK exam and I invited Amal to come to our show and just talk about AFK and his course. How was your journey when you moved to Canada and how much did you struggle and how do you relate to those new dentists who are coming to Canada and trying to go through the NDB process? Yeah, so, you know, there's nothing special. It's the same. Like, whatever difficulty they're going through, I went through that difficulty. You know, <laughs> no one gets any... <laughs> Any, it's still <laughs> difficult. I came here. It was uh, I graduated from University of Damascus 2011, 12, 10, 11. I think. Sometimes I forget. You know, somewhere Sometimes there. there. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I came here, and my goal was to take the AFK in, in 2012. You know, because I had that same misconception everybody has. I just thought, you know, I'm smart enough to pass it. You know, for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just felt like, yeah, I can, I can do it. Why not? You know, and I studied. I just finished. I didn't practice in Syria. I just uh, finished my school. And yeah. when I came here, um, I started sending my documents. Same struggles, you know, I had to communicate. You know that confirmation degree, the worst part? You know, you have to have the university put in the date that matches your oh, dates. And if, you're, if you have three different dates, <laughs> you don't know which date oh. to use. Yeah, so... <laughs> If you guys are going through that <laughs> problem, we understand, you know, it's just, just don't let it beat you up. Just keep going right? and figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was planning and I called the NDEB when, I remember that part of the confirmation degree got rejected at first. And then I called and I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to do the AFK. You know, same, same. I understand like where people come from when they wanted, I want to call them and try to fight for it or something, right? Yeah. And I told them like, <laughs> I, could, I could, you know, I'll send it to you guys later. Just you know, I'll sign something that I actually Just have. let me give the exam. Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter to them. No Doesn't one, matter. no one gets special treatment. You know? So, yeah. so oh my God. yeah, I got delayed. Uh, I had to take <laughs> it in 2013 because there was only one 
months a year back then. Remember those days? <laughs> yeah, 2010. <laughs> no, I did. I didn't even clear the exam at that time. But yeah, yeah I I do. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't do it, you're delayed a whole uh, year, right? So then come back next year. <laughs> yeah, people complaining now, yeah. like you have a good, you have a better mm. than them. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it was delayed. So I'm like, okay, well maybe this is for the best. I have, and I did yeah. the pre-assessment, you know, the one online, and I got 71. Yeah. I thought, hey, that's not bad. But you know, that's not enough. Yeah. Like you need to do better pretty much. To actually, the exam is not the exact same. Uh, so yeah. I had a year. So I, you know, I did the same thing everybody does. I thought maybe I'll get a job. I started working in a restaurant. I did the George Brown College to get my harp to see if I could do, uh, you know, be a dental assistant. I even volunteered. Hey, that's awesome. Okay. I did. Yeah. I did all the things that everybody thinks about too. You okay. Know? <laughs> See me. I thought I was the only one. Then I asked some other people. They and now I know that you are also one of them who did like go to the college and did some programs. Did that's pretty cool. Brown yeah. <laughs> I I did go to NSCC, Nova Scotia Community College. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did <laughs> yeah. I did some other courses. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I get the idea that you want to do something then and. Um, what else did I, I even volunteered for a clinic. I went to a prosthodontist yeah. just to go once a week to see how it is, thinking that it'll help me somehow with, it helped me kind of to learn how inside the clinic is. But then that's when I learned, yeah. you know, clinic is very different than what you're studying. Okay? <laughs> it's not like, yeah. even the specialist will be like, I don't know what the answer to that is. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, not what we do. So yeah, that's so true. What my plan was, I bought the dental decks part two and I started studying 10 cards a day one card from yeah. each uh, subject. That was my initial plan. Um, and uh, I, I also studied from USMLE, uh, the medical and pharmacology. So I got really good at pharma. That's and, impressive. Yeah. yeah, and then I got from that the summaries what I needed for dentistry after like checking the questions and everything. And also I kept Saturdays open just to keep it interesting where I study from books. So I'd had like Carenza's periodontology, I would read from it. I had endodontic books and I, I would yeah. read from them just to keep that going. And that helps me in summarizing like some things. Um, so that's what I did. And, you know, I learned a few things and I passed the exam afterwards. I did the exam 2013 and yeah, and I got a high mark and I went forward and doing ACJ, ACS, you know, back then, you know, it was everything was still a little bit simple not like now like you know acj course yeah. would be like three days you know <laughs> like, <laughs> back then, yeah. but uh yeah so and yeah, yeah then i got my license in uh you know 2014 and yeah. yeah that's pretty much it when i was studying for the afk um those 10 cards that took me like seven eight months and i was writing down at the same time like i would write in my binder what i'm studying every day and i did have some terminology in the like barrier in the terminology so i had to kind of check what this means in dental terminology because universities yeah. in syria were in arabic like even the terms you know so oh. that was a kind of a part like i had to kind of cross over that as well and yeah, I managed to do it and I learned that when you read the decks the first time or anything, don't write, okay? You're, you're going to write everything. Yeah. You're pretty much going to write everything in the decks on this piece of paper. <laughs> it's not a it's not a good time. So I tell students don't write notes on your first read, you know? Maybe on your second read. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I studied the decks and then I finished it my first time and I went to questions. And then when I I see a question, I would be like, "What is this question?" Okay, I don't know how to the answer. And then I would find the answer in the decks. And then I would be like, "Whoa, yeah. like, I don't remember anything." <laughs> So another yeah. tip I tell them that your first reading, you know, like probably doesn't count that much. Like yeah. uh, it's just, you're, you know, it's a lot of information to memorize all at once anyway. That, I don't know. That makes that's so like, much sense. Yeah. Just like some tips from my journey, you know, but uh, fortunately I got through it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So tell me something about um, Scholars Dental. Like how did you start that? What was your purpose behind starting the Scholars Dental and what is the focus or your main mission behind scholars? Well, my main mission is really just to teach dentists what I learned, you know? And, you know, when I started, well, when I went to school, I studied in the uh, University of Damascus in Syria. And, you know, while going through 
I, I'm not sure if everybody has the same experience, but abroad, sometimes you, you don't always find the best education with the professors, right? Like sometimes you get a good professor. Sometimes you might get a professor that, you know, they give you what you need, but you're just like, I don't get it yet, you know? And yeah. I felt that when, you know, I, I tried to take education in my own hands a bit and I started getting my own books and reading um, on my own time. And I actually like did it in a way where I thought in school that I'm going to study this because this is why I need to become a dentist and then I'll study for the exam what I need, you know, for school. So yeah. once I did that and then, you know, that helped me a lot, you know, and then when I came here to Canada, I already had a citizenship here. So when when I came back, when we came to Canada, um, I started with the whole process and learning more. And then I found that um, like when I talk to people or study with someone, I found that they're they're benefiting. Like they also find these things new. You know, like when I go yeah. like, oh, look, I understood this concept. This is what it means. They're also surprised by that. So I didn't, I thought maybe it was just me, right? So, yeah. So oh, I, I can totally, uh, totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, because sometimes you don't know if you're not understanding it or so, you know. You um, sometimes just nod your head like this. Yep, let's yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, people simplify, you know, in school, they go like, yeah, just like that, you know, like, but there's like yeah. something deeper that's missing, I feel, you know, and when I figure those things out, and then communicate it to others, you know, I see the response in them. Like I could sense that they get it now. And yeah. that's really like scholars is kind of an, a, a, kind of like a, an avenue to allow that to happen, like to, to, to teach that and also help them pass the exam. So it's like two in one, right? Because um, they both are linked. Like if you learn them, then you can yeah. answer any new question. You're not like scared of there's a new question or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, and I think like uh, in dentistry, uh, many people want to teach, but the art of teaching is something very rare. And I wouldn't just blame students for not learning it the way dentistry should be learned, but also teachers who do not teach it the way it should be have been taught. How the clinical applications are for like, for example, biomaterials. Many of us think biomaterial is the last thing they want to like put a, enough effort on, but somehow it's a very important part of dentistry or the basic um, basic pharmacology as well as uh, biomedical sciences. Like many of us think like that's that's gone. Now let's focus on root canals and implants, but mm -hmm. that basic uh, biomedical science just stay with us for so long. So I totally it, agree with. Yeah, yeah. it's like it, it, what makes you a doctor at the end, right? Like you can't ignore those parts like the the medicine, yeah. the pathology, like that's the part that makes you, you know, if you're communicating with a physician, you have to understand what, what these things mean, right? A little bit at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a little bit at least. <laughs> the thing is with dental yeah. materials, I remember that was one of the first lectures I made and um, I taught before with an institute and I said, I'll, I'll, I'll take the dental materials. They're like, what? Like, is that the one? Like, why are you choosing that? Like, that's the worst thing to choose. And I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, I think I have a plan. For it. And it was surprisingly mm -hmm. a success, right? Because um, I took the, like, I, I combined everything from the decks. I, I drew my own images to show you that yeah. it's understandable. Like, you can understand dental materials. You know, it's not like always just memorization. It's just if you make it bigger, you can see things better, you know? Uh, Imagine you have spheres of amalgam and you're like, you know, you can imagine yeah. it better. That's great. And towards the end of this video, those who are watching it, we are going to see how Ahmed has actually de uh, designed the entire course of Scholars Dental for AFK exam as well as some other NDEB exams where he's going to walk us through his awesome course and explain us why his course is the course that you need to clear your AFK exam. So there will be multiple parts to this video. Please make sure that you continue watching this series. Every other day, I will post another video from this interview where Ahmed is going to answer common mistakes done by AFK students when they are preparing for such exams, changing trends in NDEB exams. How is everything changing after COVID and the influx of so many international dentists in Canada trying to get their lessons to practice here? There will be so many questions answered in this channel so keep watching make sure you like subscribe and share with a friend who is in the common journey bye